Hello, my name is Dietrich Griffiths, and working at IBM Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. In this series of movies, we'll be looking at Enmon as a starter pack for people just starting out with it. In this one, we'll be looking at online monitoring for AIX and the current versions of AIX only. Now, what I mean by current version of AIX is quite generous. This is anything that came out after 2008. You can see the versions there, AX6, TL2 and AX7 are probably what you'll be running these days. If you're running older versions, um, and even some of these versions from 2008, 2009 and 2010, they are not fully supported now. Um, if it needs a fix generated to fix a bug that you've reported, we'll actually be asking you to upgrade to a later version. But it was in 2008 where N1 became integrated into AIX itself. So Topaz M1 is installed as part of AIX, as the default install. It's supported like any other regular AIX performance command. You just type in M1 and it will start up. It's as easy as that to get going. So when you type M1, it's actually going to run a script called user bin M1, and that's going to start up the binary called Topaz M1. We actually have Topaz and M1 commands actually in the one binary and we can flip between the two modes, which is quite convenient. When it starts up on the screen, it's actually going to put Topaz Enmon out on the screen, as you can see in the blue bubble. If it says something like Enmon 11 or 12, then you're actually running the classic version of Enmon. Now, if you're in one of the supported from 2008 versions of AIX, you should be using the Topaz Enmon. Well, that's enough talking. Let's actually go and play with Enmon and have a look at what it actually looks like on the screen. OK, so here we are on the machine. I've typed in the OS level command minus S so we can see I'm running AX7, TL3, Service Pack 4, 2014 and week 41. Nice brand new copy of AX. If we use the Wentz command, we can see when we type in Nmon which program will it actually start. And here we have the user bin Nmon. So let's just start it right now. And off we go. It's as easy as that. Note down here, this is the Topaz M1 version. That's what we uh, want to run on these modern versions of AIX. Then we have some basic configuration information about this LPAR. If we look after lots and lots of LPARs or virtual machines, then um, we want a little reminder of what actually we're on in here. We actually have the details of the machine down in here. We have uh, 32 CPUs in this logical partition. They're at 4 gigahertz. This is a nice Power 8 processor. Is actually in an E870. 30, uh, 64 bit kernel and hardware, as you'd expect with a new machine. This is the LPAR number and the LPAR name, as you'll see it on the uh, HMC. A reminder about the AX version TL3 in here. Okay, now the most important thing to know about Enmon is how do you get out of it? Well, you type the letter Q and it just stops. It's as easy as that. Remember Q. It's not to exit or stop or anything else, um, or control C, we hit the letter Q. All right, let's go back in again. If you actually don't have these lines around the outside, that means that the uh, cursors, which we're using to display efficiently onto the screen in here, doesn't understand the term variable. So you'll need to change your shell term variable to match what you're actually, your terminal emulator is happy with. Next most important command is H up in here because it gives you lots of hints. Now I'll just type the letter H and here we have the help information. It says most of these keys toggle on and off. So if I hit the H key again, it switches it off and H back again. Okay, now some nice useful things in here. C for CPU. So you type C, bring up the CPU information. If you type C again, it will put that away. M for memory, and there's a nice L in here for longer term stats, we'll look at that in a minute. D for disks, hopefully you can sort of remember some of these. N for network, or capital N here for NFS stats. Down here we have T for the top processes. Up in here we have the uh, little K for the kernel internal sorts of numbers. Then we have over here P for some information about the logical partition statistics. Then we have uh, further down in here, we have uh, J for the journal file system stats. And they're probably the ones that I use uh, most often to go and have a look at what the machine is actually doing. You can learn some of the others when you get uh, more used to what's going on. I'll hit the uh, H again, and let's just bring up the CPU stats. 
So here we can see some CPUs. We only can see from 0 to 19. So if we make the window a bit bigger, we can see a few more of these. But we can't actually see them all because it's a nice big configuration. This is a, a classic sort of problem we have with more and more CPUs these days. I actually have a, another Enmore running here with a smaller font. Here we can see all 32 logical CPUs. You can see it's using the top setup in here. The bottom ones that they are 100% idle because they're being uh, switched off. We don't need those to run this uh, current workload. Down below we have the uh, configuration, the percentages for the whole LPAR. Important up in here we have entitled CPU is 4 and in use CPUs is um, all 4 up here as well. Don't forget in here we have SMT8 so there's 4 CPUs look like a whole load more when we're actually running these are logical CPUs. If I just put that one away and uh, I actually stop that workload running in the background I was using NCPU to generate that. We can see here that it realizes that it's actually switching off whole CPUs in this case and not showing them and I don't like this mode of jumping about showing what's happening. But I don't uh, actually want to know about the logical CPUs at the moment, so let's switch those off. It's just annoying me. We can look at a different mode. We can type in an L. Then we have the utilization long-term stats. I'll start my workload back up so we have something interesting to uh, look at. Here we go. Using quite a lot of the uh, CPU power. Um, but I'd actually like to look at, rather than the percentage of the time the while we're on the CPU, I'd actually like to see how much CPU am I using. If we hit the hash key, then we'll see, we can see one CPU, now it's changed to two CPUs, it's about putting rescaling up in here, so this graph is shrinking, here's the uh, four CPUs at the top in here, and now we can see the actual physical CPU use out of those four physical CPUs, even though they're running eight threads at a time, we can see we're pretty near the edge with this particular um, application. If I stop my workload over in my other window and start um, less workload, and we can see these numbers will come and go as uh, this workload is actually running. Here I'm using 15 programs and that's keeping uh, half of my CPUs busy. Each of them getting a bigger slice of the CPU time. Let's switch off these long-term stats with typing L and then look at some of the other statistics available. Disk space, probably not doing very much. And networking, that will be doing something because I'm actually monitoring this over the network. So this is actually N1 running itself in here generating packets. We can see the uh, this is the kilobytes on the network, very low. This is the number of packets in and out on the network, equally quite low. This is the size of the packets, very small. So we couldn't drive this to 10 gigabits per second. And uh, these are the uh, the peaks we've hit so far. Down in here we can see there's no errors on the line. Be careful about this one. It has the uh, megabits per second. Although some adapters can have three different uh, speed ratings on the network. Uh, the data structure we're pulling out of the AIX can only got the size for one, so it actually gives one of these sizes. This isn't necessarily the speed of the network we're actually running on at the moment. We can also look at T for top processes. At the top in here, this is my uh, NCPU program generating um, all the workload, and it's ordered on the uh, CPU column here. We can look at other things in here, like which one's doing the most disk I/O, uh, how who has the biggest program in memory. If we go to hit the 4, we can see which is the biggest. Oh, there's a Java process running here. It's taking, yeah, the program is actually uh, half a gigabyte in size. No surprises there. At the moment, we're doing a refreshing once every two seconds. If we hit a minus sign, it will halve that, update the screen a little bit faster. Um, if we hit a plus sign, it will slow it down a little bit. There's two. And plus sign it will double it again and plus sign it will go up to eight seconds a time. That actually gives us a bit more um, not flashing things on the screen as we go. We can actually read around the screen 
between each update of the screen. We switch those off. We can also do things like having a look at the uh, P for uh, partition information. And uh, we can see all sorts of information in here about the 64 CPUs in the entire machine. Um, we can see that we've got uh, SMT8 switched on in here. This L bar has a minimum and maximum of virtual and logical CPUs in here. We've got uh, lots of other information going on. These are dynamic LPAR events will be uh, recorded in here. And we can see what sort of mode we're in. It's an LPAR. We can do dynamic LPAR changes. This is uh, SMT shared, uncapped, migratable. We can do live partition migration. And um, it's not donating. And we could actually do uh, AMS as well in this machine. And we can actually see how much uh, physical CPU that was being graphed on the long-term stats for us. Switch that off, we got some kernel information, uh, but important things like the run queue are up in here, a whole bunch of other information. Lots of kernel information like the process switches and system calls. Switch that off, I go back to uh, memory stats here. So this is the physical RAM in the machine and the virtual memory or paging space. So we can see we have uh, 128 uh, gigabytes of memory. And we only have uh, half a gigabyte of paging space, but then 95% uh, of our paging space is uh, free. This is good. In here we also have this uh, NumPerm, famous N1 number, sorry, a famous AIX number. Uh, this is the file system cache size. So the file system cache is a very small percentage um, of the memory. In fact, most of our memory is actually free in here, 91%, same over here. So this has got uh, having a big application installed at the moment. It's not really using very much, apart from when I'm using my um, test tools to generate some CPU. So let's switch that off and go back to the help information. There's lots of other things in here you can find. Um, I wanted to highlight two things. N1 gets all this information out of AIX libraries that actually talk into the, the kernel and the various places underneath in detail. And so it's very efficient getting that information out. There's two things that it doesn't use uh, libraries to do that, and that's the fiber channel adapter stats. And we use the FC stat command. This is because this command in here is closely coupled with the device driver to get information out at a very low level. And the same thing with the VO server C adapter. We use the ENT stat to actually get that information out. Everything else then is coming out of library calls to get the information. This makes N1 pretty efficient and doesn't use a lot of CPU power to get a lot of information. Two things slow uh, N1 down. That's when you have hundreds or even thousands of disks. That takes quite a lot of uh, CPU power to get that information out of the kernel. And the same thing if you're running uh, thousands or tens of thousands of processes that actually is a big data structure to pull out. Apart from that, you'll find N1 using a fraction of a percent when it's actually running. If you want N1 to use less data, then ask for less updates on the screen. Go for an eight second snapshot if you like. Well, that's enough for now. I'll hit Q and we'll come out. Well, that's enough from me for this little movie. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as Mr. Enmon. You find lots of uh, movies from me on YouTube. I've got an expert blog and there's two virtual user groups, excellent places for lots of material and information about running AIX and uh, power systems. If you've liked this movie, why not click the thumbs up below?